Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is the one, the only, the Azathen, and we're back with more Lordaeron, the format. This is Battles for Azeroth, part two, and uh, we're going to be jumping back in here as, yes, look, the Alliance did manage to lose Stratham on that sucks. However, that doesn't mean they're completely dead yet, right? Because Ironforge has been holding out against a siege for, well, like 20 minutes now? Yeah, I think Ironforge has been under siege for about 20 minutes, and if they properly use nets and stuff, they are going to manage to catch the Skybreaker out of position, and that will just kill it. That will be... Ye shall be over and done. Oh, fuck. Alright, so look, our, um, it's always not a bad idea to keep an eye on the Mage player because he will inevitably be going to where the hotspots are. Lordaeron managed to escape, but I don't know if he managed to keep Garethos alive. <laughs> just barely, you little shit. Okay, I love it. Hey, you went south, and then he's going to move back up north through Altrak Mountains, and then probably back around south to try to help Airy Peak. The mages are here for now, attempting to do their best to hold off fell lords and things like that. Uh, it'll be a small boost for experience for Antonius. However, he will take a small bit of damage attempting to defend this. Oh, and more mages now moving in. It seems like the dwarves are probably losing their... Not their footing, but I was going to say, they're no longer under quite as much pressure as they used to be. So now Airy Peak becomes the next point of defense. Um, and again, a very good point of defense. Most people don't defend it just because of the, incon the sheer inconvenience of it, but it's very good. Shadow Fury, this unit has attack damage increased. Uh, it does not appear to be, and I feel you are lying. Maybe that is armor. It has plus six armor. It's a lot of armor. Fuck Ironforge says, get wrecked boy, our Dragon Maw player. Let's go siege Lordaeron. <laughs> Scarecrow, our uh, dwarf player saying, you shall not pass. Yeah, we can't. There's no melee. No one will. One more trial, in my opinion. Um, yeah, like, I think he's right. You definitely do not just, this is sunk cost at this point. If you give up on Ironforge, all you've done is waste time. Yeah, I know they last for point one second on Skybreaker, but if you have 12 people, it's pretty inconvenient. Like, it just keeps it from a train. Even if you just, like, cast it every half second, like, space it out. Don't just, like... <laughs> people on the VODs, I'm sorry you had to hear that. Um, but, yeah, you get the idea. Just, like, space it out a little bit. Just, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, throw it out like that. Nerubian 8 sacks are going to slowly count down their health and potentially hatch here for our blue player. Yeah, Dwarven Settlement deep inside Iron Forge has absolutely no chance of surviving. Lich King will wipe that out. And since they did get rebuffed from Lordaeron, I see no reason why he shouldn't go ahead and focus on solidifying his control over both the upside and underside of Northrend. And the elves are now once again on the forefront against the Shadow Council. <laughs> Alright mages, what do you got? I'm curious as to what Scarecrow actually has to contribute to this, because he seems to be stuck in Ironforge right now. And yeah, he does. He has a number of demon forces, basically the whole Dark Horde. They've built a forward base, their beast areas are almost complete. Um, realizing finally that their air units are where they're lacking, so he's gonna go ahead and build up that. But the mages have no defense. And if Kirasame doesn't go help, I mean, somebody has to go down south and help. Wolves? What are you gonna do? Oh shit, he's up north. Uh, Pauly, what are you gonna do? Ah oh, shit, he's up north. Um, so I feel like the mages are actually completely fudged right now. As two dwarven bases under assault, and no one's defending the dwarves at all. Grandmaster Vorpal does get aimed a little bit, but it's not going to be enough to actually count him out. And you can see now Jaina in trouble once again. Will Green allow another hero to slip past his fingers? No. Jaina casts an invulnerability globe, catching only herself in it, really. Um, that's a weird place to use that, Jaina. That wasn't most of your forces, Jaina. And most of your teleports are gonna catch you, Jaina. <laughs> that's bad. 
Oh, she did get out though. She did manage to get to New Dalaran, and Antonitis is out of place, but not dead. Okay. <clears throat> I was a little worried about how that was going to turn out. Oh, all right. Let's check Iron Forge one more time. There's still nothing going on. Rend and Kargath and Marduk. Surely Mar Maruk Wormscale is still here, right? He's got to be mixed in the forces like a badass. Nope, Boon. All right. All I see is Boon. <laughs> oh, fuck. Airy Peak will finally get wiped out by the combined forces of the Forsaken and the Shadow Council. Now, this is currently 5v7, no longer 6v6, because the Forsaken are on the enemy team. And I do not believe that the Civil War has taken place yet. Nope. All right. Evil's still evil. Evil as fuck. Oh my god, Candyman. No, goodness no. Sorry. I feel like I need to uh, explain myself here. No, this is 12 players. These are players controlling every single race. These have a number of uh, paths they can take, upgrades, heroes they can focus on, um, like, just, it's very interesting, and every single race has at least two or three upgrade uh, paths they can go on, and it's pretty phenomenal, and it starts out as a 6v6, it can break down, if you're interested in a more balanced, or more interesting, or more dynamic, and again, format is interesting, because it's 6v6, and it's kind of easy to understand, but it can get complicated, so it's, um, it's a lot like Smash Brothers, where it's like low, <laughs> low barrier to getting in, but like high skill ceiling. And that's what Lord on the Formath is, whereas Lord on the Aftermath is kind of like, it's going to be a little bit easier. Yes, it still has a high skill ceiling, but it's lower breaking in point. Whereas Formath is higher breaking in point because of the number of paths. And because it's not going to go well every single time. Anyway, uh, Lord on the Aftermath, Lord on the Formath, of course, being the prequel to Lord on the Aftermath. This is the second war. Oh my god, a Dracosith! The Dragon Spawn General now leading the battle. He's probably going to be pushing in on Dalaran soon, or he may move up into Alterac and attempt to take on Anderhal. I don't know what forces will be able to actually offer any respite to Anderhal at the moment. Our Lordaeron player has shown no interest in moving away from Capital Palace, and I don't blame him. People have been there pretty consistently between Capital City and Dalaran, Lights Chapel, or Lights Hope. Our oh, tears hand. God damn it! These big bases, Iron Forge, things like that. Oh, those are the troublemakers. And here comes the newest assault. A force of fire gut ogres will be leading the charge on Iron Forge. And as the Iron Forge towers, freshly repaired, begin to rain down their fire on enemy units, I yeah, yeah that is a big force. But the lights, hope. The Argent Crusade, they have abandoned their their small-sided view of only controlling the North, and they have can, they have opened their mind to everything they could possibly do. What is this? Blinded Light. This unit is blinded. It will miss some of its attacks. Excellent! Okay, so, the Horde forces are completely fucked right now. Not only is this a wonderful AoE being used by the Air Forces of Yellow, the Skybreaker, uh, a number of AoE spells being cast at the same time by both Light Blue and Yellow Heroes, but that miss ability that was cast by our light, our Argent Crusade player, I believe off of Asylian, the Blinding Light ability, we're going to go ahead and check it one more time, has a chance to miss attacks. You can see how many misses are going to be coming up here. Hopefully we'll see it used again, but we'll put it on one time speed to show the sheer desperation. The Dark Horde was so sure that this was going to be an assault, that they would push deep into the enemy base, but I'm Fortunately, they find themselves almost held evenly at the very gates of Ironforge itself. And Rend, yes, and Kargath will retreat. They are the first ones, the Pit Lords and uh, Infernals left here to hold the line. Um, yeah, the Skybreaker absolutely confident in its dominance of the sky. <laughs> Holy crap. I love it. I wish they would come out with a new Warcraft uh, RTS also, Candyman. That would be pretty awesome. And the Proto Drake goes down. Aish! 
Great use of those Drake ho uh, Great Hawks there. Again, even without upgrading their attacks, Great Hawks are extremely capable of a small group of three or four or five of them taking out siege lines extremely quickly because of their generally heavy armor that they possess. Now, Stratholm again! <laughs> it was lost to the Cult of the Dam. Then the Cult of the Dam lost it to the Silver Hand slash Argent Crusade. And now, the Scourge has it once again. Anywho. No big armies, no loss of forces. It's just going to be, congratulations, you now have a base. Okay. So they have a base. If they want to defend it, they can make a base. Anderhal will be snatched from the forces of the Shadow Council. It looks like Lordaeron once more on the aggressive. And as we go ahead and pause real quick, we're going to go ahead and say, uh, let's add up these control points here to figure out which team is kind of hanging out in the lead right now. And uh, we do have to remember that Forsaken is on the uh, evil team. And I don't think there's been any loss as of right now. No, not seemingly from what I would expect. Okay, so Highborn is five, Dalot is six. That puts us at eleven. Dwarves at one twelve. Uh, Argent Crusade three is fourteen. Lordaeron seven is twenty one. <laughs> oh no, twenty one versus Black Dragonflight nine. Cult of the Damned, 5, 14, Forsaken, 1, 15. Oh no, Shadow Council, 8, that is 23. Dark Horde, uh, 6, that's 29. Burning Legion is another 9, that's 38. Lich King is another 11, that's 49. 49 versus 21. This is terrible for our Alliance players. We're going to have to see a ton of movement, at least as far as developments go or events. Because right now, Alliance is on the back foot. Do you know why they're called Fire Good Ogres? Because they had Indian food last night. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. <clears throat> Fire Good Ogres are pretty awesome. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. Um... The dwarves are under way more assault than I actually thought they were. They're attempting to hold on at the moment, but the horde has managed to break through temporarily. Now, this is legitimately only temporarily. Yes, they have broken in here, but they now have three directions they have to go. The base can only be taken. No, yeah, they have more units, and that's the problem. Um, if they're intelligent and they spread it out, and they're ve oh, Kurosami, you need to share your gold. With your allies, holy shit, he's sitting at almost 800 poly at 113. Uh, let's see what their team's allies have. Uh, 10 on our Dwarven player. Bojan has 30. And, uh, yeah, Wolves 22 has 221. Kirasame really needs to throw his allies some gold right now. Even just throwing 350 gold to each, the, the High Elven and the Dwarven player would probably enable them to hold off that siege with no problem at all. And that's <clears throat> one of the difficult things to realize is, what am I doing? What do I have? What am I up against? What's coming next? And what are my allies up against that I can help them with? What do I need to prepare for? A lot of people have this paranoia where they're like, well, what if I give them my, if I give them my stuff, then I could lose. Um, yeah, you could, but you, you gotta learn. Alright, so, um, as we continue on, we see that the dwarves have managed to uh, essentially reach a stalemate here if only our light blue player Polly could create a few more units from this barracks. The knights alone would stall them long enough to make the towers and whatever they have left efficient enough to do their job. It looks like forced attack, focus damage on this iron forge tower. They want to take it down one by one. The last one left alive in the back left corner. And the dwarves are on their last footing, guys. And so, I mean, the undead are kind of as well. If they cannot manage to break an important bastion at some point here, they're going to lose. Because, yes, they do have the advantage. And we've been staring at this advantage for a long time. But what does that mean? We know that if this battle is going to continue on for another two episodes, 
Something's going to happen. Something awful. Something terrible. Something dark. Oh fuck, the Black Dragomon now on its rampage as well. And Dark Green, ah, uh, Kurosabe, where are you buddy? He's actually going to be helping the Blood Elves, sorry, the Highborn, defend their lands against the undead. Ah, how's Feron still? Where are you? Putting a little bit of pressure on Dalaran, essentially keeping them boxed up with very little forces. There's no reason to really stay here at all, but he will make Dalaran just paranoid enough to stay. And that's all he needs. He just needs him to stay. Polly, where the hell are you, man? Oh, he's an Iron Forge, and he knows that Light's Hope is about to be under assault. But they have managed to push all puss. They managed to push all puss forces out of their base. And the horde pussing push push as they puss push push. Hey laddie. Tyrion forging no, backing up, come on. He's not gonna let himself get mana drained quite too much, but now Tears hand under assault. The Alliance loses this. This is a huge problem for them. But I don't know how you push this back. They're letting too many units in. Too many bike world death knights. A new barack. Nerubian guards. Tears hand. Yes, it has 10,000 health, but that's less than a fucking gate that we've seen go down many a times in this fight already. So. Dwarves are under assault once more. They will be holding just outside the gates of Ironforge. And that's gotta be uh, Thargus Anilmar casting his invulnerability shield. Earthen leading the charge, animal companions, yeah, just hack them down one by one, take out. I'm really worried. If Tears Hand falls, this is kind of, it almost, it doesn't signal a GG for the Alliance, but it is a turning point. Like, more shit is going to have to go down if this goes down. I... Alright, the dwarves managed to continue to repel the orcs, but I, I mean the Dark Horde didn't really have much of a chance because they just cannot seem to rule the sky. Between Falstad and the Skybreaker, he just can't afford to keep putting units in the air that he's not going to be able to kill. He's like, yeah, I'll spend a hundred gold on putting two air units in the air, and he'll just murder it with his two air demis and heroes. And they don't die, they just take a little bit of damage, and they're super mobile, and I can't seem to target them down, and it's, yeah. And, or you're stupid like me and you lose Falstaff. That's the option B. So between the Highborn and the Dwarves, they have now managed to push out into the very teeth of this demon army. Oh no, but Anastarian Sunstrider getting targeted down. He's gonna retreat his entire army instead of just Anastarian. And that is a thing a lot of people do, where they just move the hero instead of... <laughs> and you have to realize when that's needed, because sometimes, yeah, sometimes if you move, like, you have a really small force, and you move your hero away from getting targeted, yeah, they're gonna move their shit in, and they're gonna kill your small force. But sometimes if it's pretty even, like, just move the hero. Anywho, Morali Morales is gonna get taken down. The Alliance Kingdom of... Coltiris? I want to say T something, because it does seem to always be T something. Terranus. Literally the only thing I can come up with. God damn it. Alright, Coltiris wiped out. No weirdness coming out of Outland yet. No big events. We're going to speed up just a little bit to see how this continues. Um, this is evil, like, doing really well. Like, really, really well. Is evil decided to go... Alright, let's, let's, let's check. Come on, surely evil has decided to... Yeah, there they go. They want civil war. Okay, so now we have the situation, which we were all kind of hoping for, whereas, yes, the Alliance is beaten down in a submission. They're almost dead. <clears throat> They're pushed back into their strongholds. The last hopes they have. 
And now the undead are going to betray the Legion. The undead have betrayed the Legion! So this gives our Alliance players some tiny scrap of hope as the new boundaries are drawn. So let's go ahead and count how many people we have here in the one hour mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve players at the one hour mark. <gasps> and we have uh, just a little over that to go. So I think what we're probably going to do have to do is I expect that the game will crash somewhere after part two. We're going to get to like one hour and f 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, and then the game is going to crash. And I will have to go in here and figure out how to get through not only this, but another Yusuf replay that he sent me that was uber fuck off long that my computer just does, does not seem happy to handle. So Nerubian guards at 4-4 upgrades will be storming their way into Silvermoon. Uh, no defense against them right now. Call to the Damned helping them along the way. And um, Lordaeron is going to be under attack soon, so I wonder how long he can afford to leave his units. Oh, never mind. He's actually moved back down to Anderhal and will be attempting to take back Anderhal from the Shadow Council. <clears throat> Wolves 22. <laughs> He's stuck in Silvermoon. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ugly coming his way. For and sure. Jesus Christ, Nephrim has managed to get his full group of five heroes. He has Lady Death Whisper, Not the Plaguebringer, Alexandros Mograine, Kel'Thuzad, and Patchwork. Patchwork, you tanky son of a bitch. There is occasionally a trigger for the Civil War. The Civil War can be triggered in several different ways. It can be triggered, like, and there's a lot of reasons to do it too. It's like, um, if some players on the Alliance leave, it's a triggerable by the undead. If the something Legion leaves, it's triggerable. It's, there's like a lot of ways that they have built this, these triggers in to try to make it as fair as possible for players who continue to try. If you continue to try in these sorts of games, you will almost always be rewarded. Now, that is not true for things like Azeroth Wars. Azeroth Wars is kind of like, hey, it's a sandbox. If the bully pushes you over and you don't then kick him in the nuts, it's totally understandable if he throws sand in your mouth and fucks your mom. Like, it will let that happen. Whereas um, games like Lord of the Aftermath, Lord of the Formath, Kalimdor of the Aftermath, things like that, they generally tend to have a number of events that are based around the idea of keeping you alive and keeping you competitive and giving you options to explore, but it does require a small amount of research on your part. Yes, you will have to go and check out those forums. And I, they are almost always going to be posted in the descriptions, brigandshaven.com, diplomunion.com, sorry, brigandshaven.net. Check that out. And it's weird because our... Forsaken player? Yeah, okay, he has two heroes. He's got Veramothers and he's got Sylvanas. But he doesn't seem to be contributing a lot. The next big assault is probably going to be on Silvermoon. So we have times eight temporarily. Just because, like, yeah, Ironforge is dead as shit. I'm, oh my god, holy shit, I was gonna say Ironforge is dead as shit. That is so not true. Right now we have the Dark Horde, the Legion, and... Oh my god, and the Shadow Council all attempting to try to get out here, but the Shadow Council realizing that this attack is being rebuffed, they summon a portal to Maradum and retreat, leaving the Dark Horde and the Legion here to try to basically get on with this abortive assault, but with way too much reinforcements. From Dalaran... <laughs> They just can't. Holy shit. And this is why you have to understand why having a good dollar on player is extremely important because he's putting out fires, guys. He's teleporting around. He's realizing when these summoning prism, when these big fights, when these unstoppable forces are coming into the fight and he teleports in and he says, you know what? We're here to lend you our aid. We're here to fight with you, paladins, dwarves, murdered and magni alike. However, let us not forget that, yes, at the same time, the Highborn are under assault. The Highborn are attempting to help. 
Iron Forge, but they're also getting wiped out. If the Faltharian Academy gets killed, I don't know what the fuck that means or does for the Alliance, but it's probably not good. <laughs> I wish I knew more about all the tiny little intricacies of these custom maps. Um, uh, what does the Faltharian Academy do? Faltharian? Not Faltharian, Felth it's Faltharian. Okay, and more attacks going at- wow. The very core of Ironforge being held here. As- oh, god damn it, yes. Let's go ahead and check out Polly right now, because I think he's decided where he's needed. And this is a really great example of um, a player kind of deciding where he's needed. I'm going to check out his heroes. One, two, three. So he knows what's going on here. He knows that Ironforge is being held by the barest of threads. This is a huge force that is assaulting it. There's two th or three forces currently involved. We've already seen the Shadow Council, the Dark Horde, and the Burning Legion. Um, All together, that comes to what, like 21? 21 control points against the Dwarves, which have one, our dollar 10, and then uh, Argent Crusade, so tw 12. 12 control points versus 21. Yes, they are on the defensive, and that helps. What I want to point out here is that Polly is doing a wonderful thing, which is playing a side rep. He is currently drawing as many forces as he can down this right path, which will detract from forces going up the middle. But not only that, forces in the middle will detract from units going around to the left. He doesn't have the options, and he also knows that the Mystic Ward is here on the left. So were, he's, were he not to have to worry about the right, he could send all of his units around here and just kill there. But since he has to worry about that and being flanked and all of that, uh, this Argent Crusade participation trophy I'm giving to him, fuck and yeah. Now, so <laughs> now it's Silverhand City's chance, while the Forsaken... Uh, the Cult of the Damned, and I think Team Art, in his own way. Team Art, where the fuck are you? Oh, he's on islands. This is not good. Okay. Team Art went around. He went around extremely quickly, entering the Waygate, and is now flanking the forces of the Highborn. The Highborn? Oh no, they've brought back their forces, but this is far too many undead for them to handle. Between the Forsaken, the Cult of the Damned, and the Scourge, the Lich King. I... 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 I, 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 I the Siege has encamped itself outside Ironforge. Yeah, and what we have right now is several Siege encampments. Oh, Lordaeron has come to the aid of the Highborn. And we're going to see a wonderful siege here now that we have this little bit of reinforcement. The Highborn can go ahead and focus their f ire on the north, on the Lich King. And if Lordaeron wants to focus on the south, yes, he's going to have to deal with Noxorama's patchwork. All of the terrible enemies they're facing in the south. That's a little bit of trouble. But again, it is five against seven. And we're still waiting for what it has to inevitably be. Oh, fuck. Death and Decay being cast on the Alliance forces. This is bad. Um, yeah, and plenty of Scourge forces and Plague. Too much damage. They're going to have to retreat. There we see our players realizing, nope, that is far too much damage being cast on the front lines. We can't hold the gate any longer. Or at least, the very least, we have to back up, temporarily convince them that we're leaving, uh, get their units to move, and heroes included, <laughs> because here's the thing a lot a lot of people know. If you're casting Blizzard and you manage to clear out an enemy fort, and then they start to like back up because Blizzard's killing them, and then you have to stop your Jaina or whatever's casting the AoE from casting it, be or it'll kill your own units. But you're not always paying attention while you're doing that, and sometimes you'll stop it and then look back up and they've already reattacked. you're like, ah! So you have to like mind game the mind game of the mind games. And in the meantime, that's going on. The Highborn and Lordaeron are doing their very best to hold Quell the Lost against the Undead. And it is a near unstoppable force they, they are facing. On every single front, they are against insane amounts of siege. And that is what will basically tilt the battle at the end of the day. The siege is going to be what kind of locks you down.
This is going to the undead. Oh. Holy shit. The undead left to completely unmolested almost most of the game have upgraded Call to the Damned 1 6 upgrades. Lich King 4 5. Forsaken 0 1. But he has a full contingent of Valkyr, which are capable of mind controlling and doing a lot of other really nasty spells on enemies. So. He's kind of kicking fucking ass right now. The undead are really at the advantage. <laughs> and the uh, the mage is finally teleporting into the sun while deciding, okay, well, I mean, maybe if something really, really, really bad is going on, we can go ahead and do that. Fog of War, there's still the Legion. And we haven't actually checked up on a new bias. Uh, on the Legion themselves. On what's been going on on their front. Which seems to be not a lot. <laughs> Which seems to be not a lot. For Shadow Council, nothing. Um, oh, wow. Guys, Iron Forge has not fallen yet. While they only possess a very small contingent of units, they are just against the Dark Horde, and while well, it's just one Iron Forge tower left, that they have just enough along with the Silver Hand to hold this off. And sure, the control point counts are getting really low amongst everyone, and the Lich King is really high. And he's gonna be where the next big assault takes place. On the Sunwall. Blood Elves! Oh! Kael'thas Sunstrider has joined! There is a, a hunger now. It has hardened our hearts. The Blood Elves have gained a contingent of units. Without a new source of magic, my people will surely die. All right, they have to find a new source of magic, but they have still the Sunwell. If they can teleport there, and I think he might have the money to do so. Oh, and Blood Elves. Wolves 22. Kael'thas, there he is, as long as Lorth and Martha are on. He has the money to teleport. He has a teleport. If he chooses to go to the defense of the Sunwell, I don't see how the undead manage to break it, even with their overwhelming forces. The bridge there is a daunting force, and they have not built a navy. A navy would require hundreds, thousands of gold. The question is, are they willing to take the time? Oh, construction is more teleports coming in. Could be more reinforcements from our dollar on player. Yep, looks like it. As of yet, Iron Forge still held slightly by the Paladins. My good and god. This is a little bit bananas! Uh, Alright. <clears throat> Iron Forge and the Sunwell. Tears Hand has fallen. Capital City still stands, but is not really under anybody's attack. Kirasami may believe so. He is retreating from something. Jesus. Where were you, dude? He's got just a hero, two heroes and they're very severely damaged. That always means some shit just went down. Blue, share control a sec. Hey, that's a little worrisome. Is he trying to get him on a boat? Again, if they were smart enough to get just enough boats to place... They have three armies. One army goes up the middle, one army goes on the side, another army goes on another, and then you win. But, will they be patient? Will they be smart enough? Will they, and like that's, isn't it kind of funny how you read books and like, nobody would be that dumb. Nobody would just be like, this thing would definitely make me win, I should do it. And then they don't do it, and they're stupid, and you're like, that's stupid. And now you watch a game like this, and you're like, that you would definitely win if you blanked. And then they don't do it. And it's frustrating. Our allies town is under For, mm, our allies town is under siege. But it's only a small force. Blood Watcher Point. Ah, uh, yeah. 
I think the Blood Elves can probably hold this off. If they reinforce it all from Blood Watcher Point. Again, Wolves 22 is under a lot of other pressure. I don't actually know if he, he's still allies with the Alliance. For the most part. Um, God damn. Look at Falstad being cocky as hell as they have Moira and Braun and a bunch of Earthen and just like, yeah, it was holy crap. Guys, the next assault on Iron Forge is not a joke. We're really gonna have to keep an eye on this. Holy shh. Okay. Um, Iron Forge. Sunwell. Capital. These are the next big ones. The undead are getting ready. Splitting their units on the side. Preparing the main force for their assault. Reinforcements. Ah, oh, gosh. Again, if they would just commit to a little bit of navy, but they're not going to. I can feel that. Howland's still not a problem at all for anyone. Oh. oh no. This is gonna get aggressive. There we go! Demons come in, they're trying to kill Cillian with the uh, the health drain. Stun, keep running away, Cillian heals himself. And now it's time for the dwarves to intercept the forces that are coming in. Willing to do the damage. Aish. If they bring in the Fell Reavers, this becomes such a bigger problem. But as of right now, the Dwarves in the Lights Hope Chapel hold the advantage. They have the Skybreaker, they have the choke points, they have the advantage. But I don't know. Ah, like, what do you do? When this is that strong! Oh! Normal Akazic getting focused down! If they can take him out, he's out of the game. Got Legion coming up. Mm, yeah, I know that. Like, well, they're trying. Sunwell. Mm, no. Blue, what is your problem, Blue? What could possibly be your problem? Seems pretty upset. The assault on Iron Forge continues, as the Earthen are the most awesome tanks in the world. But however, there are just too many units, and if they get the opportunity to split themselves between three fronts and bring in the Fell Reavers, we're in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, Deathrock get murdered! Deathrock gets wiped out, and Hey Hey loses a unit. He is now, I believe, down to only Doomlord Kazakh, who is on the front lines, hiding a little bit. And, oh no, Uther the Lightbringer is going to teleport out. He doesn't actually need to, and I, he does get stunned, so he's forced to stay. But his staying might be exactly what the Alliance needs if he fights. Now, if he stays here and he just runs around and tries to leave, he's fucked. But... Polly has 528 gold. He needs to give that to Scarecrow. Who's sitting at 29? He's like, you know, I could probably make a whole fucking army that would turn this back if I just had like a lot more gold, but I don't. And that's really frustrating to see as, <clears throat> I don't know, like just a person. Okay. Iron Forge will finally be wiped out. No attack on the Sunwell. Which I can kind of understand. If I'm being honest. Oh! Get, ah, Doomlord Kha'Zix still up. Trying to focus him, but it's just not going to happen. Backs him up bit, ba bit, ba bit, ba bit, ba bit, ba bit, ba bit. Ooh! Ooh! Daylight, command me one go. Oh, oh, day, it's a day, it's a day, it's a day, oh. Iron Forge fall and the dark hold go. Oh, shit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Lordaeron's empty. Let's TP over there and kill it, says Nefarim. I think I'm getting the feeling that we're here in the, uh, the inside talk. Hashtag everybody. 
All right, the Alliance has just realized that they have lost Iron Forge. There's not a lot they're living for. They've got to run in there and they've got to do what they can. So at times one damage, we're going to see the Alliance respond to this. They've run out. Lord Martharon leading the very front vanguard of the armies. There are huge undead forces camped outside the city just waiting for the foolish and Tyrion foraging. Peeks outside very briefly and goes, yeah, well, maybe just like one hit. Oh, fuck. Hold on. That's not good. Um, shit. T-Mart has actually teleported. I think he's, he said Lordaeron City is completely empty. We should go for that. I just want to make sure that's where he's going. But they are going to push the undead out of Silvermoon. Hey, hey! Who's doing that damage? Who's using that? I fucking saw that. I saw that skull of Gul'dan being used. Hold on. Unless the Verdant Sphere does that as well. No, for sure not. Great. Give the school of Gul'dan on somebody that I don't know about? Light blue. Did you steal it? No. Who's using it then? I'm so confused. Maybe pink at like the last? Okay. Well, I missed somebody. Ah, the cult will be teleporting out Kalthazad, getting the hell- Oh, no, actually gets silenced, kept in dodge right now. And I gotta say, even if that's not the smartest move for them currently, or their forces, I guess, even if they were to have to lose or retreat or anything, but keeping them from teleporting where they wanted to go is denying them 300 gold. Even just a stun, like, Bah, you're not going anywhere, bitch! Like, that's 300 gold. You just spent 75 mana to cost them 300 gold. Why would you not? That's the, that's the equivalent of killing 15 grunts. It's bananas. The efficiency of that. But a lot of people are like, no, I want them to get away from me. But don't. Don't let them go where they want to go because they want to go there. Don't let your enemy do what they want to do. That's always a good advice. So finally, Lord Ron will be under assault here. A small group, Arthas Menethel included, attempting to hold it down. However, the Shadow Council will be on its own since the other attempts to teleport did not work out. Ooh, temporarily at least. Um, the undead no longer seem to be... Okay, they did get away. Just north of Lodron. Cold of the Damned, let's see what Team Art managed to do. Where did he go? Anderhall, okay, he's on his way. They're all attempting to get there. And Get Wrecked Boy. <laughs> we have to keep our eye also on the Get Wrecked Boy because he's doing okay. These ruined gauntlets he keeps putting on his hero, these increase the strength by three and armor by two. It's very efficient for a melee hero. I like to see it. But as he's allied to the Legion, I just don't... They're in outlay and not doing that much. They're just not doing a ton. The Alliance is still under assault by both teams, yes, but it's completely uncoordinated and that's really benefiting them. All right, and here comes the Shadow Council finally laying assault to Lord Ron. With three control points versus the Shadow Council's 11. <laughs> but if I'm not wrong, the Shadow Council's not allied with them, right? Ah, uh, maybe he is, what? Oh, did, I thought, okay, they did not. Yeah, they're not allied to the undead. However, they thought they were gonna be able to do some damage with the Black Dragonflight, but the undead are here, guys. Along with the Forsaken, the Cult of the Damned has to be banging their heads against the wall right now, realizing that they're, all of their coordination has gone out the wall. As they are now defending the Alliance from what could have been a potentially devastating push. You cannot fight Nether Dragons and Infernals and a whole army and the healing Terran Gorefiend and just be like, yeah, no, I'll be fine. That's totally cool. I'll just lose all of the hundreds of gold I put into Cannon Towers for no reason, just because you have a ranged group? That sucks. But the undead will actually be that savior today.
Hey, <laughs> Tmart97. Welcome in the chat. Look at the throne. Um, I'm looking at the throne and there's no diamond magni. I'm gonna go ahead and click our player. I'm not seeing any diamond magnis. What's this diamond, ma diamond magni bullshit that you've been promising me? Not seeing him. If I missed him, call me a chat. But I ain't fucking looking. Oh my god, the undead are never ending. They just keep coming. But you have to remember, they die pretty easily, even their heroes. And Alexander's Mograin will get temporarily targeted by the orcs. Now our undead player finds themselves between a fortified rock and a hard place. A fortified rock being capital city. The hard place being the dra Black Dragonflight and Shadow Council. Black Dragonflight and Shadow Council should have aids in the form of Hey Hey, our Burning Legion player, and our Dark Horde player. All four, but where? Okay, all right. I gotta give the Legion, he's here. Where's the Dark Horde? He's heading up north through Anderhall. He will be there in a hashtag fucking minute to try to help out with these undead. But again, the undead find themselves, uh, fuck. They're gonna have to back up a lot. This is going to not favor them. Yeah, you can see Blue saying, B, 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 He probably sees them coming through Anderhall. He understands what this means. If Teal and OJ get a flank on them and lock down all of their armies, this becomes a slaughter. Hey, that was part two. Okay guys, so that was part two. Like I said, uh, I knew that was going to crash because it's a huge game, long game, and we were shoutcasting for a little bit. Um, it's about 50 minutes before we were going to go ahead and log off, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on a little bit of Fallout um, survival mode. Been having some fun with that. If you guys aren't in the mood for that, please feel free to go ahead and ditch out. I'm going to restart the stream, rename it, and I will do part three. For those of you who are seeing this in the VODs, Enjoy part three. For those of you seeing this in Twitch, check out part three on the VODs on YouTube. I will now do Fallout survival mode. That sucks that that crashed right there. That was bad timing.